you guys pretty much um, got the gist of what course, delay, flange, all that stuff is? No? What do you want to know? What's course? Course. Okay. You have analog course. Analog course, when it first came out, similar to phaser, was created to mimic what a Leslie speaker did. So like, say, the old Univibe. Um, but it did it in the means of, uh, there's two different kinds of courses. There's a digital course, which you're found in most rack effects, and an analog course. Now, how the analog course works is it takes your signal, kind of puts it slightly out of phase, so that the result is a doubling of a note that kind of um, pitch shifts a little bit. And when it pitch shifts, you get kind of a little wavering effect. Uh, if you hit two of the same notes on a guitar, your whole signal. Now what a digital course, uh, digital course does, it, it actually physically doubles your note and takes that second note and detunes it a little bit. It's a little bit more rich and big sounding. Um, just great for big, clean, open chords, uh, big sound in the 80s. The analog course is a little more subtle, kind of like um, Nirvana. Uh, Come as you are. That's an analog course sound. Uh, a really cheap, inexpensive. Uh, well, at the time it wasn't the. I think it was the clone theory. If I'm not mistaken. But basically, at that time, when you used that pedal, everyone was in that phase of using a big, expensive rack gear, and you know, just it looked like the Death Star behind them. They had so much gear behind them. And then out comes Nirvana, and this guy's playing through a little stinking broken amp and like a $20, you know, clone theory pedal and started a whole another revolution where basically people kind of went back and said, wow, these pedals are actually kind of cool, you know. They weren't thinking in the terms of its limitations in technology. The limitations of what is what makes them appealing. Uh, what about a compression? Okay. Compressors, big misconception about it. In the studio, what a compressor does is try to keep the signal very even. So like say, you're watching Van Halen, right? Sammy Hagar's screaming into the mic. Now usually what happens when someone screams into the mic? It distorts, right? What a compressor does, is it takes that signal, leaves a threshold that the volume can't exceed. And when you start screaming, it can't get any louder. Just kind of smooths it out. Great for vocals, drums, and also what it does, compression sustainer, I guess, is the lower signals tend to be boosted. Play harder, it cuts. Play softer, it boosts. So, which in a studio situation, when you run the whole mix through it, kind of evens out all the levels, kind of makes everything sound a little more together. You do, good compressors are, are um, Usually ones you can't tell that really are really there, you know. It's usually the expensive studio compressors. For a guitar, compressors are good for acoustic guitar players. Uh, kind of helps even out their dynamics. Like say you're strumming really hard. Let's see if you can actually hear this. Okay, my compressor's off. the compressor. If you can hear that. I'll play the same riff. No compressor. Compressor. It takes the note, squeezes it so it doesn't get any louder. That can help with um, Cleaning out your attack, use a lot of funk music. Turn it off. It kind of smooths it out. As far as the decay of the note, too, if you're holding the note, letting it drone out, you're slowly starting to go, right? Turn on the compressor. 
suppressor. As it does decaying, it's bringing the volume up a little bit. Which is great. Sorry. It's great for acoustic music because, you know, you got to have big, clean, open, lush chords. You want everything to sound kind of flawless, I guess. Uh, great for vocalists, too. Um, but in terms of guitar, like a lot of flamenco players, uh, through the board, they'll be going through some compression because it kind of cleans up their technique a bit. Makes it a little easier to do hammer-ons and pull-offs too because when it sustains the note, you don't have to try so hard for that to catch the all be in the same volume when you start to do your like a legato technique everything's a little more even and fluid sound smooths everything out so that um it's a little it, it's like distortion but it's not it has the same kind of this is the sustain aspect. It's kind of hard to explain. What position at, uh, should a compressor compression uh, device be? The first compressor device? should go first. first. Yeah. Basically, um, since it's considered a uh, dynamic effect, it's smoothing out the player. Uh, now, in some studio situations, you can't put it in the end, but <coughs> guitar compressors aren't really all that wide sounding. Um, it's the frequency response is a little bit more narrow for a guitar player. So generally you want it to go in the front because if you put everything in like a little like Dynacomp at the end of your effects chain, it's going to choke a lot of stuff out because there's a lot more going on before that. So generally, yeah, the compressors usually go first in a guitar situation. But in like a rack situation, you know, like a, not I rack, but a rack. <laughs> a, rack a rack situation where you're processing a whole signal, say on a soundboard, you're running everything through it because that type of compressor is less noticeable. It's more for a just evening everything out. Anyone else? So I guess what, you have to just like crank the volume up on your guitar if you want, I guess the volume of the sound, but... Like, how, how so? So I guess, as you were saying, you have a heavy hand and you're hitting it, and I guess... Yeah, the, well the compressor will kind of control yeah. that. Yeah, but if you want the volume of that... If you want the volume, then just turn it off. Just turn it off. Yeah, basically. But you'll lose that. Well, you'll lose the boost. Yeah. You no, know, that all goes down to the player's dynamics. You know, like if you're speed picking on an acoustic guitar, a compressor will do wonders because you're not relying on the amps of volume and distortion to kind of sustain those notes. So by hitting the compressor, all the notes are hitting softer and all the notes are hitting louder. It, just, it smooths everything out. So. Um, yeah, the right. overall volume of it will just decrease if you have it on. It'll just keep it from exceeding a certain volume. So say like you set it to the point where a certain volume level will cause your amp to distort. Oh. But not the good kind of distortion, the kind of distortion that sounds crappy. It's kind of fizzy, you know, it's not expressive at all. You set it just below that, so it's kind of like a safety guard. Oh, okay. Kind of like with a vocalist, you know. If he screams into a mic and it's going into the red, generally sound guys will set the compressor just before it goes into that, then he's fine. The guy can scream as loud as he wants. And, Know what I mean? 